As structures, uh, we are modifying the Slinkit aircraft that we have so that it can support the hydrogen powered train that we're fitting in the aircraft. As part of this, uh, we have the original uh, motor mount that comes with the sling kit. However, uh, now that we do not have a uh, conventional engine, this uh, essentially has to be modified so that the new motor mount can support all the uh, powered train components that are needed for the hydrogen powertrain. So that brought us here. This was inspired by the original uh, motor mount. We have redesigned it so that it can support all the components that are supposed to go in the nose. And currently we are having a test campaign to see how this is going to um, behave for the certification loads that it needs to take. Um, we have done some simulations on FEM and found out that it is uh, estimated that this motor mount is not going to be able to take the ground loads. Uh, however, we would still like to go through with the test to see how this uh, translates to the real life and um, gain some data from the test to verify our FEM model. So the new motor mount design is able to facilitate the different components that are uh, included in the hydrogen powertrain. And this includes a really large radiator that goes right here at the bottom of the um, motor mount. Then we have two low temperature radiators that go on either side. We also um, carry the high voltage DC-DC converter on top of it. And then we have a compressor inverter. And then we also have the landing gear that slides right to these brackets. And these brackets are essentially designed, um, inspired by the original um, motor mount because they both uh, support the same landing gear that we use in our actual aircraft. And the next version of this motor mount that we're gonna redesign based on our findings of this test is going to be certified uh, in order to take place in our aircraft and take us to the skies. Okay, so in order to prove that our new motor mount is airworthy, we need to certify it. And we do that partly using the motor mount test, where we prove that in all the load cases, the motor mount is strong enough. Currently, I'm working on uh, the testing setup of this structure, where these giant I-beams are uh, modeled as a rigid wall, so we can mount the motor mount to something very rigid and we can uh, do accurate measurements of the deformation of the motor mount. This is our motor mount test setup with our modified motor mount in comparison to the sling. We have modified this motor mount because we have a very different layout in the nose. For example, we are using a, uh, an electric engine instead of a combustion engine. Uh, but because we have built this motor mount, we need to recertify it, so we needed to test it. This test setup is meant to test for all the load cases a certification requires us to test for. Uh, we do this by identifying several load cases, for example, putting up or putting down the nose, turning and landing the aircraft. Now it is currently in the uh, landing test configuration, uh, which is the most heavy load. We tested this by uh, simulating a landing gear with a rope and a pulley system through which we could uh, apply the load required while simulating the landing. But of course, just applying the load isn't enough, so we also took some measurements. Besides filming the test uh, to have an estimate of how much it deformed in millimeters, we also have 33 strain gauges mounted on the motor mount, as shown here, which measure the strain in the motor mount at several locations, which are critical or expected to have the most strain. This data we can use to validate the fan model we used to design this motor mount. If we can validate this fan model and we have more thrust in the fan, we can design a new motor mount with, uh, which is closer to the limits required for the loads, making it lighter, stronger and more reliable. 